Bwana Yesu asifiwe kanisa. Na mimi ninaitwa kwa jina ya Luise Mibulano nilitokea Las Vegas, Nevada. Ni hapa mbele ya Mungu na mbele ya watumishi wa Mungu jua kumshukuru Mungu kwa kuwa iko mwema. Nina Ninasema asante kwa makuu yenye Mungu kwa nafanya. Jana wakati tulikuwa hapa mtumishi wa Mungu akaita wenye kuchoka na moyo moyo unapiga sana. Ilienda kutaniwa na kuwaka na magonjwa ya moyo na kuwaka na magonjwa ya jabet na vitu vinanitoka kwa mumagot na usiku ninalalishwa katika ndoto mbaya na tumbu kufungwa na kiuno na kifua manake na kuwaka na mateso ya ajabu ya maumivu sasa nini kimetokea baada maombi ya jana sasa jana wakati mtumishi wa Mungu alituombea hapa nililala salama zile ndoto sikuziona maumivu sikuyasikia na ile hali ya kuchoka ile uko nayo ile hali ya kuchoka nimesikia imeisha mbe Yesu makofi kabisa amen Ninaamini vyenye vinabakia kama vile jabete Mungu ataende kwa namaliza pole pole. Asante Mungu akubariki sana. Sasa anafuata. This lady comes yeah, from Maliza Las Vegas. Ah, sasa mimi nataka muda mfupi na mambo mengi hapa. Yeah. Na ingine yenyewe nataka shukuru weko Mungu. Ile wakati mwezi wa tatu mtumishi wa Mungu alikuwaka hapa. Ndio wakati nilianza kumfuata kwenye mtandao. Bo, ikafika mwezi wa ine tariki tano wanataka enda kumkutano kule Mwanza. Nikasikia roho wa Mungu akanitembelea ya kwamba nichange jua mkutano. Nikachanga jua mkutano. Nyuma ya pale shetani aliinuka akaniletea vita ya magonjwa, pressure kapande kafika paka kumwisho na jabete kapande kafika paka kumwisho. Nikaingia hospitali nikafanya hemo siku ine. Katika kufanya hizo siku ine, sikupata hata nafu na magonjwa haikushuka hata kushuka. Lakini wakati nilimwambia Mungu kama ni wewe Mungu shivyo juu mbinguni Mungu mwenye uko natumikisha alibariki sumbe naomba nitoe ndani ya hiyo hospitali na sitaki mauti kwa Mungu akapita nasikia hiyo hiyo siku wakapita wananitoa hospitali na nikapita nasikia fadhali na ndio ninasema Mungu abarikiwe sana Asante sana Mungu akubariki sana Asante sana Mungu akubariki Karibu mwingine jina unatokea wapi na Mungu amekutendea nini Amen Bwana Yesu asifiwe Naitwa kwa jina la Feza. Natokea hapa hapa Irving hapa pa Texas. Baba naomba unisaidie nina shuhuda nataka nitoe tena nilikuwa nimwaidi Mungu kama hichi kitu akinitendea nitaposhwa kusimama mbele ya watu nitangaze makwenye Mungu amenitendee. Samani na kumbe nipatie kama dakika kidogo tu. Nataka useme ulikuwa na tatizo gani na Mungu amefanya nini? Si basi. Jana sanya nimekuja hapa nilikuwa na tatizo la mtumbo kuna pita wiki mbili nilikuwa nimelala wakati nimeamka asubuhi na kutana kama wame niliamka na kutana kama wameniingiza vitu huku kwenye kwenye kizazi yani niliamka nikajikuta niko wazi sana kwenye kizazi kwenye sehemu yangu ya asili na kutana wameingiza vitu kule kwenye sehemu yangu ya asili mpaka huko ndani kukizazi senye mimi naamka asubuhi na jikutana sema mbona mimi niko wazi mbona niko hivi Alafu naamka asubuhi nasikia kiuno kinakatika umu mote umu mote mnakatika nasikia miguu yani siwezi hata kusimama. Alafu nasikia roho inakimbia haraka inakimbia haraka ni sina hata nguvu. Nikasema hivi ni kitu ni kitu gani? Kuna wiki mbili zimepita. Basi nikakuwa naendelea nasikia ma, maubiri nikafungua ile ile maombi ya kamba kamba za mauti. Nikasikiliza sana ile mahubiri nikajunga maisha sana na maombi na maombi na maombi. Na jana Mungu akanisaidia nikapata nguvu nikakuja hapa. Wakati jana tuliomba sana nimefika pale. Nilianza kusikia mtumbo mnakata sana afu najisikia sina nguvu kabisa na ridhia. Lakini wakati nimetumemaliza maombi Mungu akanisaidia nikapata nguvu nikarudi nyumbani nikafika salama. Kwa hiyo umelala salama. Nimelala Hayo matatizo na maumivu ambayo ulikuwa unasema yameondoka. Yameondoka na jisikia salama. Mbe Yesu makofi kabisa. Amen. Sante sana. Shida wa pili mwezi wa tatu wakati baba alikuwa hapa. Yaani nilikuwa na fatwa sana roza mauti sana. Mpaka ilikuwa inafikia mpaka na watoto wangu wakakuwa wanapigwa na na wenyewe zile roza mauti. Kumbe sikujua kama zile roho ziliwekwa kwangu 
ili mimi ndo yani ili mimi ndo nimimize watoto wangu yani mimi yani mimi walikuwa wananitumikisha walikuwa wananitumikisha kichawi watoto wangu yani walikuwa wanapigana vita kila siku mpaka wanashikiana abisu ikawaje sasa basi wakati tulikuja hapa wakati tulikuja kwenye maombi hapa Dallas tuliomba bika simbo sikupata fungu, ufunguzi lakini rohi kakata ikasema mfate mchungaji popote pale kwenye huko akufungue nikakufata wakati ule da Columbus wakati nimeenda Columbus ma, si ile siku ya pili maombi anaisha tuko katika maombi nikasikia na banwa na kitu kitu kikanibana kikanibana kikanikunguta kabisa alafu nikasikia kinatoka wa kikatokea kwa mkono wa kikatokea kwenye mkono kama kitu kinaruka kikaruka kabisa mpaka nikaanguka na mimi uh. basi wakati nilitoka kule nikafika nyumbani juu nilikuwa niko na mtoto mlevi alikuwa alipigwa na zoroza mauti ni, ni mtoto wangu ana miaka 23 ni mwanaume lakini ilikuwa kazi ya pombe bangi a, yani hakuna Sa, usimu sasa baada ya hapo nikatokea baada ya hapo wakati nilifika nyumbani nikakuta na tena amelewa sana lakini baada ya hapo alienda na punguza pombe alienda na punguza na punguza mpaka hivi iko salama iko salama iko vizuri hivi anatumika na hivi anakunywa pombe lakini anaweza kanywa pombe kama vile nili moja kama kwa wiki na yenyewe naomba Mungu amsaidie Asante sana Mungu akubariki sana Mpe Yesu makofi njo njo mama njo hapo njo hapo nashukuru sana Simama pale mbele simama pale pale Mpe Mike Haya jina lako Yesu asifiwe Mimi jina langu naitwa Vivienne Kutemba Mimi natoka Manchester New Hampshire Eh pakuya huku niliomba Mungu mimi nasema Mungu wangu napenda niende nikakutane na wewe. Sasa umekuja ulikuwa na tatizo gani? Jana wakati ile mtumishi alisema kuna bantu wako wanahangaika na Jin Mahaba babambe ntumbo na mkongo. Nilibamba ntumbo na mkongo wakati aliomba mimi najishikia sana ntumbo yangu inaanza kupompoloka na jishikia mwili yote na tetemeka. Nikalaka na problemi ya miguu sometimes ina nyumaka kutokea pale shishikete na kintu. Unasikia tena kitu. Unasema asante. Oh. Mpe Yesu makofi kabisa. Asante sana. Karibu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kwa jina naitwa Ebula Fariala Diedone. Ni mwenyeji wa hapa Fort Worth. Eh nilikuwa na banwa sana na ulevi. Mimi ilikuwa haipiti siku sinyi pombe. Haiwezekani. Wewe huyo? Like mimi huyo. Lakini kwa bahati nzuri nilifuatilia sana vipindi vya Bishop. Yeah. Inatosha siwepo mpaka ingia. Mpaka sasa hivi na miezi mitatu. Nimetangaza watu wenye ushuhuda ndiye mna kuja sana mnataka. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Eh? Amen. Shukrani Mungu. Mpe Yesu makofi. Nataka niwaambie watu wa, 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 wa watu wa Marekani. Mimi nasimama hapa na nitasimama zaidi ya masaa mawili hapa. Alafu nimesema watu wa ushuhuda waje. Mna kuja taratibu nayotaka is not me. Bwana asifiwe. Haleluya. Namshukuru Mungu sana. Mimi nilikuwa namfuatilia baba kwa mtandao. Mimi ninaishi Worcester, Massachusetts. Nilimfuatilia kabisa na roho yangu nilikuwa naona tu wakati namfuatilia nafikisha mwisho namwambia Mungu nisaidie. Ninajua tu siku nitamuona baba nitapona. Na ninashukuru Mungu jana nilipona sababu nilimuona na alinigusa nikaona kama nimezama ndani ya kisima cha beti saida nimepata uponyaji ninakuwa na shida huu mtoto wangu mshukuu wangu ana ugonjwa wa, wa bazimu iko Afrika na huyu anatangia kuzaliwa leo anaeleza miaka 18 haya wai kusema kutembea iko tu kukiti na wao hawa ni wa mama zao nao wana mizigo ya mibaraka na huyu kijana wangu naye anasunguliwa na pepo ya ulevi na ukahaba. Lakini imani yangu inaniambia gisi nilifika nilimuona baba, nimekwisha kupona na hii mahitaji Mungu alisha kuijibia. Mimi namshukuru Mungu sana. Amen. 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 Sante sana. Wewe we ulikuwa na shida gani? Wewe ulikuwa na umwa nini? Wewe we ulikuwa na kugusa jana pale nikakwambia mimi nasema mie imani yangu ilikuwa inaniambia tu siku tu nitakuona nitapona. Nilikuwa nasunguliwa na mishale ku mikono ile mavita ya kijamaa kunifuatilia juu watoto wangu viko huko Marekani kupiga vita watoto hawana salama tangia walifika huko vita na vita huyu iko na miaka 18 hatembe yake iko kukiti miaka 18 hasemake 
Hakuna hata kitu mwe kenye kina kinafaa kumwili yake. Na huyu naye ni mtoto wa mtoto wangu wa kwanza mamake alikufa aliwaacha viko watoto tano leo iko sasa mwenye kwa watoto. Ndio yasemagi. Njoo hizi mafoto sabo. Na huyu njoo muhimu nasema nasimbuliwa na pepo ya usinifu na ukahaba. Na hawa njoo watoto wangu wawili nao wana mizigo ya mibaraka. Njoo mafoto. Niko wapi ambaye asemagi? Bwana unielewe Kiswahili. Eh huyu 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 mwenye hasi mamake. Na huyu iko sasa mwenda bazimu. Wako wapi ya watoto? Uyu na yiku usta masasuseti. Kwenye jimbo lingine uko? Eee, kule masasuseti kwenye mbitoka. Uyu iku Afrika, mamaki alikufa viko pale Uganda, viko wanangua nje ya kuku ya uku. Na mamaki akafia pale, natangia mamaki alikufa, kakua samba da wazimu. Asante. Uyu njoo mwenyana sumbuluwa na pepo ya ulevi. Na haba bawili njoo mwenyini kwa uyu njoo niko na ikala kwake na uyu. Ah, ya, asante, asante. Wa ikala kwa ke... Asante. Ncho, ncho mama, omisho. Amen. Karibu. Mama jina lako na ushuda wako. Mwana yesu asifiwe. Jina angu na itua balo ngeru wa bitondo. Jana ni hili wakati ulikuwa ngale Tanzania. Sukuwa na amani. Hata kusema sauti kutoka sukuwa na toka. Yike yike kwa kinabana hapa mpaka hapa hapa kumugongo sukuwa na sema nilikuwa na tembea hata kushifuwa shindo hivi sukuwa na weza Lakini hile saa nilifika hapa nilikuwa muhile yali yali Na ukasema saa bali wenye kusikia muoyo Bali wenye kusikia muoyo Niko naona wenye kusikiria muoyo na bakuya hapa Saa nilikuya hapa Kilipotea Kilipotea Mpa yesu makofi kama una wivu Amen, amen, amen lakini kama bingini benye biku umu sawo sawo ele sani ilikia marapiri nika kwambia seme mwiri oti inachoka inachoka kufika kunyomba miguru sukuwa na tembea tena hivi nafika hapa njo nikuwa nakuya na jikokota hivi ulikuwa na jikokota hivi lakini leo nakuja vizuri hivi nafika hapa nchaba likuwa nafanya manini huku tuku tunapika pika miguru njo miguru nakuwa na tembea kadogo mpe yesu makofi ya sante mungu wa kubariki sana Amen, amen. Sante sana mama. Karibu. Wewe umetokea wa? Mwana yesu wa sifiri. Wewe si mama likuwa wa mwisho? Mimi ni na story ya fura, ya uzuni na fura. Aya, tuende haraka jina lako na mwana yukuwa. Sasa, jina lako ni Laila. Natokea Arizona. Sawa. 2001, nilienda kwa babari kisumbe. Mwezi wa tano, Tanzania. Yuhu. Nila kamtoni mfuru kwa Yorudania. Nipo fika huko. Nilitembea safari mrefu. Apo, Uganda, nikafika Tanzania. Mtumishi nikuwa mwisho, waka kuja kuniambia. Akambia wewe, kuna mtafuta mungu, alakini hauna roho ya kusame. Ndiyo kweli babangu, nimaliza kufa. Nilikuwa na roho ya uchungu, mimi. Leo, nawambia ni neno luzuni, lakini leo ni furaha kwa angu. Na nasikia amani, kuona tena mtumishi apu. Nilipufika Tanzania. Nilikuwa na mwanaume ya likuwa Dubai. Nikamambia nimefika apu, atupate, mtumisha tombe. Shetani katembea na lomu wanaumi. Haka niambia. Iyo kanisa ya Vuka Yorudani. Hawonge kizungu. Mimi sijue nini kiswahili. Haka nichukua shilo international Tanzania. Utoka hapa nilikuja tumara moja. Sikuruti mwe kanisa. Nika sikia roo yangu haikuwa na mani. Ala kini sikuwa na uwezu. Nika toka. Nika nichukua paka nicheria. Nipo toka nicheria. Nika rudi. Ala kini nika sikia kama. Mungu, sichu, ata siku ngini, nitapata kurudi kwa vuka yordani. Ilikuwa kanisa zaki hawasimagi ya kingereza, honongi ya kiswahili. Alakini leo, nilisema nitakanyaga. Hapa sijajua, sijawa ikufika mahali hii, sijue yesedi, juu ya kumtafuta. Na shukurani, ninasikia roho yangu, kenya nilitafuta miaka 2021. Nimepokea leo, buwana, sifi, wapewe, sifi, wapewe. Ebu mpe yesu makofi kabisa. Kwa for Jesus, please. Did you understand what these people of God have testified? Nothing is impossible with God. Mbali. 
lakini wanapokuja kwa imani Mungu anawafungua kabisa and those who follow us uh, via the web you discover that a lot of people who come to Vuka Jordan they come from different parts of the world but because of the faith they carry when they come the Lord God delivers them and they become free totally na wao liyakuja kwa imani kwa kutaka kukutana na Mungu so if you came here by faith wanting to meet God Mungu atakuhudumia leo God will minister under you today Kabla sijaendelea ningetamani tutoe sadaka. Before we continue I would like us to give an Mana offering. Mana baadaye sitakuwa na muda wa utulivu tena mpaka mwisho. Be- because later I won't have that time until the Tayari kutoa sadaka. So are you ready to give an offering? Kuna jambo nataka nikuambie. But I want to tell you something. Uko tayari kunisikiliza? Are you ready to listen to me? Wangapi wananisikiliza? How many are listening into me? Mana naona watu hawana utulivu because i see people are not at rest Nataka niseme mambo mawili ninapoenda kutoa sadaka There are two things i want to tell you as we are going to give the offering Mimi nina agano la Ibrahim I have the covenant of Abraham Na unakumbuka Abraham Mungu alimwandaa katika mazingira magumu sana And you remember Abraham was prepared by God under very tough circumstances. Mimi unayeniona mbele yako. As you look at me in front of you. Mungu alinitokea kwa moto mwaka 1997 nikiwa kwenye bara. God appeared to me by fire in the year 1997 and I was at the bar. Moto uliingia nikiona kama kala moto liingia kwa mdomo wangu likaingia tumboni ghafla nikabadilishwa hali yangu ikawa tofauti watu wakawa wananikimbia fire came through my mouth and i felt like a call of fire that entered my belly and i was a totally different person even people were running away from me wale wanaonifuatilia wanajua ushuhuda huu walio wengi maana uko kwenye mitandao pia many of you who follow me knows this testimony kwa hiyo mimi sikujua ukristo so i did not know christianity sababu kwetu sisi asilimia kubwa na waislamu because in my family a big percent are muslims mimi nilikuwa siuchukii uislamu kwa sababu sikujua ukristo pia i did not hate muslims because i did not know christianity lakini baada ya mungu kunitokea na kuniokoa but after god appeared to me and saved my life maana maneno ya kwanza aliniambia nimekutokea kama mungu moto ulao ili kudhihirisha dhambi zako because the first words he told me said i have appeared to you as god the consuming fire so i can reveal your sins lakini hiyo kitu ilikuwa inaongea ndani ya tumbo kwenye moto nayo waka na nikifungua mdomo hivi naona miali ya moto inayotoka namna and this voice was talking inside my belly and when i opened my mouth i could sense like arrows of fire coming out of my mouth baada ya mambo yote hayo and after all these things mungu akaja akaniambia mimi ni mungu wa ibrahimu isaka na yakobo and god came to me and said i am the god of abraham isaac and jacob na mwisho alipokuwa ananiandaa kwenye utumishi mimi nafupisha tu and when he was preparing me for his service i'm just trying to cut it short kama kuna mtu aliandaliwa kwenye mazingira magumu sana ni mimi hapa if there are people among many who have been prepared under very tough circumstances i am one of them kila mtu alikuwa ananikataa everybody was rejecting me na wakati na wapenda lakini wanikataa i love them but they don't accept me Siku moja nimekata tamaa namwambia Mungu kama watu wanitaki sasa ya nini na wewe ndio ulioniokoa si bora unichukue niende mbinguni And one day I gave up I said God if you are the one who saved me and people are rejecting me then it's best that I come to heaven Na kama iwezekani mimi nitaacha wokovu nirudi nilikokuwa kama ni dhambi basi nikateke tena moto siku ya mwisho And if it's not possible then I will walk away from salvation and go back where I was I'd rather burn with fire Ndipo Mungu aliponitokea This is when God appeared to Na me. And he told me. Kwa sababu nimekuitia mataifa. Because I have called you for the nation. Ni lazima utakuwa na gharama kubwa ya kukuandaa. It is necessary that the price to prepare you would be very high. Haitakuwa rahisi kama watumishi wengine. It's not going to be as easy as for others. Sababu nimekuandaa kimataifa. Because I prepare you for the nations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Na kwa sababu hiyo And because of that mimi nimeandaliwa katika mazingira magumu sana. I have been prepared under very tough circumstances. Na ndipo nilipomaliza 
And after I was done with my preparation, God took me in his own realm in the Dipo spirit. Mafuta na kuniambia, roho ya ubaba kama kwa kwa Ibrahim. Na he, pia wewe agano lako limekuwa kama agano la Ibrahim. Atakaye kubariki nitambariki. Atakaye kulani nitamlani. Haijalishi ni mtumishi, haijalishi nimemuinua kiasi gani. Atakaye shindana na wewe anashindana na mimi. Mungu alipofanya agano na mimi ndipo akaniambia yeye atakuwa mdhamini wa utumishi wangu. And the Lord took me to his own place and anointed me and said I have given you the anointing of becoming a father for many. And this is the covenant of Abraham. Anybody that is going to bless you, I will bless them. Whoever curses you, I will also curse them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nani watu wachache sana ambao wanagundua namna ambayo wanajiunganisha na huduma hii na wao kufanikiwa. Ni wachache sana. And there are very few people who really understands how they connect themselves to this ministry so they can become successful in their lives. Very few people get this. Na uthibitisho kwamba ameitwa kimataifa unaweza kaona kanisa letu la Vuka Yordan Tanzania ni nani ambao wageni wanakuja wengi kwenye huduma yao kama kanisa letu. And for you to know or to prove that I am called for the nation, you can look at the example of our church Vuka Yordan in Tanzania that many of those guests who come to the church they actually come from other countries. Machotaka ni sema What I want to tell you kila mtu atakaye gundua kile ambacho Mungu amenipa Everyone who will discover that which God has given Maisha yako hayatabaki jinsi yale Your life will never be the same Sasa kwa sababu ni sadaka ni kuambia jambo la msingi sana Because this is offering let me tell you something that is very foundational Mwezi wa tatu nilieleza na watumishi wakaeleza mkatoa sadaka zenu Mungu awabariki lakini kila sadaka ambayo inatoka huwa usifikiri na kwenda kutumia ni na kwenda kumsikiliza Mungu. In March I explained this and the servants of God who were here explained this. Thank you so much for those who gave. Hallelujah. But let me tell you this. Every offering that you give, I am not going to use it myself, but I always go back and listen to what the Holy Spirit is telling me what to do about it. Maana ukizila sadaka tu bila kumsikiliza mwenye sadaka maagent pia wanaleta sadaka kutoka guzimu zinaweza zikaua huduma yako Yeah because if you just take the offering and then use it listen even the devil can use his agents also who give offering then it can become a problem to you Hallelujah Hallelujah Lakini leo na habari njema But today I have good news Mungu ameniambia The Lord told me na akiniambia nasema Mungu ananiambia kama hajaniambia uwezi kusikia Mungu ananiambia And if God tells me I will tell you the Lord told me if he didn't tell me I will not tell you that he told me Unanielewa kitu nasema You understand what I'm telling you Ukisoma Ayubu 41 mstari wa 11 If you read the book of Job chapter 41 utafuatilia taratibu Slowly you will follow Inasema ni nani aliyetangulia kunipa hata nimlipe Kila kilicho chini ya mbingu nzima ni changu Mungu anaongea ni nani aliyetangulia kunipa hata nimlipe? Job chapter 41 and verse 41. 11. Verse 11. Okay, Job chapter 41 and verse number 11. This is what it says. Who has prevented me that I should repay him? Question mark. Whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. Me ona hapo. You see that? What wengi sana. Many people tukikutana nao watapokea miujiza yao na nani lakini maisha yao hayawezi yakabadilika. When we meet with these people they receive their miracles yes but their lives will never change. Yanaweza yakaenda tutaratibu kama Mungu anavyowasaidia lakini yasibadilike. The life can go slowly as God helps them but you will never see Lakini kuzitaka baraka ambazo Mungu amenipa special. But if you want the blessings that the Lord has given me specifically. Unahitaji kunibariki mimi kama mtumishi wa Mungu. You need to bless me as the man of God. Ndio maana Mungu akaniambia leo. And that's why God told me today. Kuna baadhi ya watu wa ambao Mungu amewasukuma ndani yao lakini wanaogopa kunibariki. There are some people that the Lord has put the burden in their hearts to bless me but they are afraid to do so. Na nikaandika hapa. And I wrote down. 
Kanaambia kuna watu wanataka kukubariki lakini wanaogopa. He said there are people who wants to bless you but they're scared to do so. Bwana kanaambia waambie wasiogope kufanya hivyo, wakifanya the, hayo na kutii na kukubariki kadri watakavyo nitakavyo wasukuma ndani yao. Mungu akaniambia nitawavusha mambo magumu yaliyokuwa yanawakabili. And the Lord told me tell them not to be afraid. If they make up their mind to bless you I will make sure that I will help them to cross over through difficult situations that they were facing. Because when you give an offering, sadaka, you're giving it unto God. When the Lord allows you to bless me, kile Mungu it means you're receiving that which God has given me. How many understands that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's why the Bible says if you give to a man of God even the cup of water, or glass of water the blessings will also follow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many have understood what I say? Na usije ukapata tafsiri mbaya kana kwamba mimi nasimamaga fuatilia klipu zangu zote kama unaonaga mimi naongeaga hivyo vitu vya kutaka mimi. And please don't get it wrong or don't conceive it wrong. You follow after all my clips and see if this is what I'm talking about. It is only when God allows me it is for your benefit so that you can come out of your situation. Say amen if you understand. Na unaweza kufanya hivyo na kesho kama kesho wale ambao watakuepo kama utakuwa na unasikia msukumo ndani yako na Mungu anakusemesha kuja kunibariki usiniletee nguo usiniletee kiatu leta pesa now let me make it clear tamanisha na nini jamani na pesa you can do that today you can do that tomorrow for those who will be there but just remember don't bring me shoes don't bring me any garments or clothes please don't bring kitenge don't bring anything bring money just take the value of what you want to give in forms of money na bwana asinge niambia wala nisinge sema na wewe hiyo if the lord did not tell me i would not tell you that hebu sema amina kama umenielewa say amen if you understand hallelujah hallelujah na asante kwa sababu usije ukanitafsiri kwamba nimekuja marekani kutafuta hela and thank you don't translate it that i have come to america to seek for money mimi mungu amenibariki i am very blessed na anaendelea kunibariki and he continues to bless unapotoa ni lazima uunganishwe ili ubarikiwe ni kwa faida yako when you give you connect yourself so that you may be blessed it is for your own good ndio maana wakati wa wachungaji wakati nilikuwa tunajifunza mungu akaniambia ni shuhudi hayo nikamwambia mimi nimebarikiwa And that's why when I was talking to the pastors and the ministers the Lord reminded me to testify to them that I am Mungu amenipa mashamba mengi zaidi ya eka karibu nilikotoka mkoa nilikozaliwa na zaidi ya eka 50 nina 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 ngombe za kulima nina ngombe za kila namna nina mazao yangu ambayo nimevuna huwa nakaa mpaka hata mwaka nije kuvuna nije nije ku nije 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 kuuza The Lord has blessed me so much especially in the area of farming He's blessed me with so many lands even where I come from I have a lot of crops that I've already harvested that is enough till next year Ngoja ngoja nimalize usitafsiri tena Wangapi waliona waliona ka clip fulani kanatembea mimi niko shambani na vuna huko ndiko asili nilikotoka nina mashamba mengi mimi nafanyaga kazi mimi ni askofu lakini nafanya kazi kwa sababu Mungu ameniruhusu nina manyuki ya asali nina kila kitu Arusha nina mashamba zaidi ya eka nyingi tu nina nyumba za kupangisha nyingi nina mahardware nina 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 nina, nina. Nina vitu vingi Mungu amenipa. Amenipa loji na sasa najenga hoteli kubwa tu zaidi ya vyumba karibu sabini na nane. Kwa hiyo nataka ni na magari mengi na nataka kutembelea nitatembelea mengine hata nikitembelea sitaweza kuyamaliza. Nina, nina vitu vya biashara. Kwa hiyo Mungu ananiongoza. Nina nyumba mikoani na nyumba Mwanza na nyumba Singida na nyumba Dar es Salaam na jenga bado jamalizika kila kitu. Kwa hiyo ukiniona mimi Uone na mbeba tu Kristo ni sio kwamba natafuta pesa na mtafuta roho ya mtu ambaye Mungu amenituma ili itoke mahali Mungu aweze kutukuzwa. Hebu sema amina kama unanielewa. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maana watu wanaweza kukuangalia kwa jicho tofauti sema ameenda kuomba hela sio mimi. Hiyo iondoke kwenye ufahamu wako. Hebu sema amina. Uko tayari kutoa sadaka yako? Are you ready to give your offering now? 
Kwa hiyo tatoa sadaka lakini ile ambayo nimesema kunibariki kama Mungu atasukuma hiyo ni kesho. Sawa bishop. Hiyo 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 ni kesho. Hiyo ni kesho ambayo itakuwa special na nitaomba kama Mungu atavyoniongoza maana yeye ndio ameniruhusu itakuwa sawa. Lakini sasa hivi tukatoe sadaka zetu. Eh hey, kama hauna bishop wana nikumbusha kama hauna ndio maana hata ukujua jiandae ulete lini kesho na pia msikilize Mungu kutoka moyoni mwako kuna mama moja juzi wakati nimetoka Burundi alafu Mungu akamsemesha na familia yake mume wake na, na familia yake ni watu wakubwa tu Arusha juzi wamenipa shamba na unajua Arusha ilivyo ardhi nzuri na ni gharama amipa shamba eka kumi. bure Mungu ameamsemesha. Wewe unafikiri huyo mtu atabaki jinsi alivyo? Haleluya. Mimi nitakuombea na miujiza itatokea, lakini ili upate mlango wa baraka lazima Mungu aseme na we namna ya kunibariki ndipo na wewe utaanza kuona ule mlango na kwenda. Amen. Hata kama usemi amina, mimi nimeshasema amina. Amen. Karibu tutoe sadaka ili We welcome and let's Sadi. give offering. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. Karibuni tusimame kwa heshima tumtole Mungu sadaka. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give it a key. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Our God is good. Amen. Amen. Yeah, my God is good. Oh. 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 Yeah, Everything na double double. 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 Everything na double My God is good. Mungu ni mwema. Mungu ni mwema. Mungu ni mwema. Mungu ni mwema. Everything na double double. Everything na double double. Everything na double double. Everything na double double. Everything on 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 double double. Hallelujah. Everything on double double. Oh eh, mungu ni mwema eh. Mungu ni mwema. 
Everything not a boda 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 Let us clap for them, please. Mwambie mwanzako saa imefika. Now tell your neighbor the hour has come. Bwana apate kutuhudumia. So that the Lord will minister unto us. Naomba mketi watumishi wa Mungu. Please you may be seated servants of God. Kabla sijaleta mafundisho naomba tuombe. Before I teach let us pray. Kwa wale wenye shida na wenye mateso. Those who are going through trouble and any kind of torments. Na Mungu anaweza akakuponya hata hapo ulipo. God can heal you anywhere you are. Lakini akiruhusu kuja kama ni mgonjwa maana yake anayeponya ni yeye. But if he allows if a sick person comes it means the healer is God himself. Kwaona Mungu anaponiruhusu nianze na magonjwa kama alivyo ni ruhusu jana usifikiri ni utashi wangu. Now when God allows me to begin by ministering to the sick people it doesn't mean that this is the way I operate. Kumbuka sina kitu kingine nilijia Marekani kwa ajili ya kumsikiliza yeye kwa ajili ya roho yako ambayo ni ya thamani sana. Remember I have nothing else that brings me to America than listening to the Holy Spirit for you because you are very precious before his eyes. Kwa hiyo kama ni mgonjwa wa mwili so if you are sick in your body una mateso mbalimbali sugu and you're going through different kinds of torments Taanza kuja hapa taratibu niombe pamoja na wewe. I want you to come here slowly and I'm going to pray with you. Na wale walioponywa jana usisubutu kuja hapa. And if you were healed yesterday you don't need to come here. Don't even come. Na Biblia nasema and the Bible says wa mwendeao Mungu lazima waamini ya kwamba yeye yupo. Those who come to me must first believe that I am na kwamba huwapa thawabu wale wamtafutao and that i am the rewarder of those who seek me diligently So as you come I want you to know Jesus is the healer. I want you to know Jesus is the healer. Hata kama anatumia chombo chake lakini yeye ni mponyaji. Even though he uses his servant but he is the healer. Kwa maana anasema kwenye Hebrewia 11:6 wa muendeao Mungu lazima waamini kwanza yeye yupo. And that's why he says in Hebrews 11:6 that those who come to me must first believe that I am na kwamba Mungu huwapa thawabu huwapa majibu yao wale wamtafuta and that God is the one who rewards those who seek him kwa hiyo haijalishi shida gani ulionayo so it doesn't matter what problem you have kinachojalisha ni moyo wako unavyomtazama Mungu akusaidie what is important is how your heart looks unto God for help 
Na tunapokwenda kuomba tupeane nafasi tafadhali. And as we go to pray please let's give space for each other. Na nitaomba watu watakuja kwa mstari. What I would request is let's have lines, two lines. One on this side, one on this side so the men of God can freely move. Takuja kwa mstari mmoja mmoja hivi. So we will make a line one by one. So ushers please help us to make two lines here on the left and on the right Na kama ni mgonjwa kwa kuwa nimeita watu sio nikianza kuomba alafu mtu mwingine anatoka ukitoka kule utazuiliwa pale And now I have called people when I start to pray I don't want you to come up they'll stop you you better come now and form a line Atuoni mstari tunahitaji mstari amesema mstari huu sio mstari huu ni mkusanyiko Tunahitaji kuwe na mstari. Yes. Hebu watu wajipange kwenda hivi mstari mmoja hivi. Alafu mwingine upande huu. Eh sawa kabisa kama hivi. Sasa kuwe na mwingine hapa. Alafu hao wa nyuma wanaingia kwenye mstari hivi. Ukishaombewa unarudi. Ukiombewa unarudi. Eh hapa katikati mpache wazi hapa. Pawe na mstari huku na huku. Let, let there be peace and calmness, please. People of God, please. Let's be quiet. If there is any information, I will let you know. Baba Mungu liye hai. Father who is alive. Tuko mbele za uso wako. We are standing before your face. Nafungua mbingu sasa kwa ajili ya kuhudumia watu wako. Open the heavens now so you can minister to your people. Nami nakukaribisha kwa utukufu wa jina la Yesu. I invite you by the glory of the name of Jesus. Kahudumia watoto wako kama upendavyo. Minister unto your people as you will. Ukakutana na kila haja ya mwenye shida hiyo nayo. Meet with the need of everyone who has a need. Nafunga nguvu zote za giza. I bind all the powers of darkness. Nafunga roho za magonjwa. And I bind every spirit of Na mateso ya kila namna. And any kind of torment. Na kuyaamuru yaondoke yaachilie watu wako. Command them to live and lose your people. Katika jina la Yesu Kristo. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wenza wako watamia watu wako na power rest upon your people and deliver them. Katika jina la Yesu Kristo uzima wako uwe ndani yao. In the name of Jesus let your life enter into them. Asante Bwana. Thank you Lord. Come out. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. Jesus the mighty name. So get what to be there. Oh, when I could jump to my mother. Now kisha ombewa please naomba urudi nyuma. Kuja.
Hey, I wake 
Umefunguliwa uko huru katika jina la Yesu. You are set free in the name of Jesus. Haijalishi mateso yalikaa muda gani lakini uko huru. It doesn't matter how long the trouble has been there but you are free. Na wengine Mungu atawathibitisha kata kwenye njozi zao, kwenye ndoto zao. And the Lord will prove that even in your dreams and your visions. Uko huru katika jina la Yesu. But you are free in the name of Jesus. Unaweza kanipa muda wa dakika kama dakika 15. Give me 15 minutes. Unisikilize kwa makini. And just listen to me carefully. Tuko tayari wa ndo Mungu. Are we ready? Kama uko tayari sema amina kubwa. So if you're ready say a big amen. Uh, nataka ni some hesabu sura 25 mstari wa kwanza paka wa tatu na kisha tutasoma kitabu cha waamuzi. I'm going to read from the book of Numbers first and then we'll go to the book of Judges. Sambu 25 Numbers chapter number 25 Mstari wa kwanza paka wa tatu. And I will read verse 1 to verse number 3. Basi Israeli akakaa shitimu kisha watu wakaanza kuzini pamoja na wanawake wa Moabu ikawa kwa kuwa waliwaalika hao watu waende sadakani sadaka walizo wachinjia miungu yao watu wakala chakula wakaisujudia hiyo miungu yao msari wa tatu na mwisho anasema ikawa Israeli akajiunganisha na Bali Peori hasira ya Bwana ikawaka juu ya Israeli and Israel abode in Shittim and the people began to commit wordom with the daughters of Moab and they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods and the people did eat and bow down to their gods verse 3 And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. Umeona kitu hapo? You see something here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kwa ufupi ni kwamba in short it's like this. Hii ilikuwa ni mbinu ya adui kuwakamata taifa la Israeli. This was a strategy of the enemy to capture the nation of Israel. Taifa la Israeli Mungu alikuwa anatembea nao ikiwa ni usiku Biblia inasema ilikuwa kwenye nguzo ya moto ikiwa ni mchana wanaona lile wingu The nation of Israel God was walking with them if it was at night was the pillar of fire and by day it was the cloud that was leading them Na Mungu alikuwa amewaambia usiwe na miungu mingine ila mimi Mungu And God had told them do not have any other gods but I alone kwa hiyo shetani akatengeneza mbinu. So the devil came up with a strategy. Wale wa Moabi wakajifanya kama wana wakarimu wana wa Israeli kwa upendo. So the Moabites acted like they were very kind to the Israelites. Wakawa wanawakaribisha wana kwenye ibada zao. And they were inviting them to join in their services of worship. Na zile ibada walikuwa wanatoa sadaka kwa miungu Biblia inasema. And in those services they were giving offerings to other gods that's what the Bible. Na wala sio kwa Mungu wale hai. So it's not the God who is alive. Kwa hiyo na kama haitoshi wakawaalika baada ya ibada wanaenda kula chakula pamoja na wao ambao sasa hiyo chakula ni ile waliopichinjia miungu alafu na ile chakula nyama zile wanaenda kualisha wana wa Israeli tayari wakanaswa kwenye ulimwengu wao wa roho. And as if it was not enough after their services they would invite the children of Israel to eat the food which was already offered to their gods. This is how they captured them. Na kutoka hapo and from that moment the children of Israel were captured wakatawaliwa na ufalme mwingine and they were ruled by another kingdom na kayakaanza mateso and trouble began na kwa sababu hiyo because of that Bwana akaniambia the lord told me kuna watu wengi sana ambao wanapita kwenye mateso na familia zao. There are many people who are going through torments with their families. Na wao wenyewe wakati mwingine wanapita kwenye mikosi ama kuumwa ama mateso ya hapa na pale. And them themselves also they go through other misfortunes or pain or sicknesses or trouble here and there. Bwana akaniambia nafunua mambo haya kwa sababu lipokana watumishi wangu wachungaji kuna kitu nilikifunua katika anga la Marekani. And the Lord told me I'm revealing these things to the people because when you sat down with the servants of God here in America I revealed a secret against the uh, air space of America. Na Mungu anapofunua hiyo ndipo sasa anaanza kueleza ili watu waweze kutoka mahali walikokuwa wamefungiwa. And when God reveals something like that it means he is making it open so the people can be free out of their bondages. Maana anga la Marekani lilikuwa linashindana na watumishi wa Mungu wa Because the spiritual space of America 
was fighting against the people of God. Kumbuka tunashindana katika ulimwengu wa roho na sio ulimwengu wa damu na nyama. Remember we wrestle not in the flesh but we wrestle in the realm of the spirit. Na inatoa matokeo katika ulimwengu wa damu na nyama kutokuendelea au kutokufika kwenye destiny yako. And it brings the results in the natural for you to progress or to be stagnated. Na Bwana akaniambia kwa sababu nimefunua siri kwenye ile anga. And the Lord told me because I have revealed the secret upon this air space. Na tuliomba pamoja na watumishi wa Mungu. And we pray together with the servants of God. Ile siku ya kwanza ya tarehe The first day on the 24th. Nataka nikuambie ufalme wa adui kwenye anga hili litaharibiwa kabisa na Mungu atatawala anga la na Marekani. The of darkness in this space of America will be totally destroyed and the Lord will reign and rule over America. Ndio maana watu wengine wanaweza wakapata mateso ya ajabu hata ukienda kwa madaktari zetu wakikupima wanakuta hauna shida yoyote lakini mwenye shida ni wewe unakuta una matatizo mpaka unamwambia daktari hebu angalia vizuri shida yangu iko wapi mbona mimi na shida. And that's why sometimes when you go to the doctors you're going through a particular situation no machine can detect your problem even though you're still suffering. Anga likiwa limemwatamia mtu when the spiritual realm is upon somebody lisilo to, or against somebody hai, which is not from the god of israel mara nyingi linaua watu many times it kills the people linaleta magonjwa na mateso and it brings sicknesses and torments sio kwao tu na familia zao na uchumi wao na mambo mengine hayaendi not only to them but in their economy their families and many things are stagnated mungu anachofanya but what god does ili watumishi na kanisa na watu wa Mungu wanadamu wawe salama so that the servants and the people and the people of the house of God become safe lazima ainie ainua watu ambao Mungu amewaandaa mwenyewe kwa mamlaka ya ulimwengu wa roho he will raise the people that he himself has prepared according to the spiritual authority ndio maana wote wanaweza kuwa watumishi lakini usiwe kama Elia and that's why you can become a servant of God but you may not be like Elijah ndio maana hata Yesu alipokuja walisema alikuja na roho ya Elia. And that's why when Jesus came the Bible says he came with the spirit of Elijah. Ni ni roho maalum au nguvu maalum au mtumishi fulani aliyeandaliwa kwa ajili ya kupambana na anga. It is a special power or spirit that has been prepared for that particular servant Dio mama, in order to fight this Mungu alimpa mamlaka ya kufunga mvua miaka mitatu na nusu na haikunyesha mpaka tena Mungu alipomwamuru Elia afungue ile anga na mvua ikanyesha na watumishi chini yake walikuepo na waliweza kuomba mvua na nini haikunyesha kwa sababu yuko moja aliyeitwa akapewa mamlaka na Mungu kwa ajili ama kuadhibu ama kufungua watu wengine And that's why God gave Elijah the power and authority to bind the rain for three years and a half and it did not rain then he lost it again and the rain came even though there were other servants of god who prayed yet they could not bring the rain but i have good news for you. that's why the bible says katika kitabu cha zaburi sura ya 105 na ule msari wa 4 in the book of psalms 105 and verse 4 mtakedi bwana na nguvu zake desire to know god and his power utafuteni uso wake siku zote seek his face always anaposema mtakeni bwana na nguvu zake maana yake iko vita he says when desire god and his power that means there is warfare maana unaanza kumtaka mungu kama mchungaji mwema akaja kukulisha because you can desire to have god as a good shepherd to feed you unaweza kumtaka bwana akaja kama bwana wa sifa na akashuka mkamsifu akapokea utukufu and you may not want to have him you may want to have him as the lord of praise and he can come down and his glory can Mungu anatenda kazi na watumishi wake. God works with his people. Na inapotokea vita lazima anampaka moja wapo mafuta aliyemwandaa kwa gharama kubwa ili kwenda kupigana na lilo anga. And when there is war he will find one that he anoints in order to prepare him to fight in that realm. Na anapopigana na hilo anga and when he fights in that realm na linapoachilia and when he loses watumishi wengine wote chini yao other servants underneath haijalishi walikuwa wamefichwa kwenye mapango kama enzi za Elia wanainuka sasa kufanya kazi ya Mungu na inastawi. It doesn't matter where they were hiding as Elijah but they will rise and they will flourish. Na mimi nataka nikwambie and I want to tell you nimefanya vita vya kiroho tangu siku ile tukiwa na watumishi wa Mungu. I have waged war spiritually since the first day with the seven. Ndio mambo ambayo Mungu alinifanya nije Marekani mara ya pili. These are the things that the Lord brought me back to America the second time. Bwana amenipaka mafuta 
kwa ajili ya kupambana na maanga Lord has anointed me to fight in this realm Maanga yanayofunga wana wa Mungu Those realms that tie the men of God Maanga yanayoleta mauti kwa wana wa Mungu Those realms that brings death to the men and women of God Na kwa sababu hiyo And because of that Anga la Marekani linafunguliwa The spiritual air of America is loose Na likifunguliwa And when it is loose Tabia za kishetani zitaanza kukimbia zenyewe Every satanic habits will lose Na watu wataanza kumkumbuka muumba wao aliyewaumba na kukimbilia kwa watumishi kwa ajili ya kwenda kumwabudu Mungu katika roho na kweli na wale wanaofanya kazi na kuzimu ambao wanatumia tiketi ya Yesu lakini wana hadao wana adamu wengine wakati umefika wataibika moja baada ya mwingine maana watakutwa na vitu vibaya for they will be ashamed one after another for evil shall pursue them Hebu sema amina kama wananielewa Say amen if you understand Ndio maana hata Musa And that's why Moses Mungu alimpaka mafuta kwa ajili ya kupambana na maanga God anointed him to fight in those realms Mahali ambapo ilikuwa wanaweza wanapita jangwani mahali hakuna maji Mungu anamuelekeza fungua njia maji yatoke ama amuru mwamba maji yatoke na maji yakatokea fungua njia wana wazireli wale nyama na akaamuru nyama zikaletwa mahali pasipowezekana waliopakwa mafuta na namna hii wanafanya majibu ya watu yaweze kutokea katikati yao And that's why Moses was anointed by God specifically for such kind of realms where there was no water God commanded him to speak and the water came where there was no food God commanded him and the meat came Wangapi wanaelewa kitu nasema? How many understands what I'm talking about? Kitu wanaelewa kitu nasema? Do you understand what I'm talking about? Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Ndiposa Mungu akaniambia. Then the Lord told me. Kwa nini watu wanapita mahali pagumu? Why people are going through difficult situations? Wewe mwacha kusikiliza maaje tuliyo kama tagu huko. Don't, don't listen to that. Mahali ambapo Mungu ameniweka napotembea kwa ratiba yake, When, nataka nikwambie my friend mimi sio mtu wa kawaida kama unavyofikiri. Hata kama unamuona ni sumbe, lakini naposimama kwenye nafasi ambayo Mungu anakuepa ananipa, sikiliza sitembei mwenyewe, niko na yeye aliyeziumba mbingu na nchi. Where God places me even though I stand as sumbe but I am not. I walk with him because of what he has called me to do in the land. Sikiliza, jana nikasema Mungu si mauti. Listen, yesterday I said God is not death. Yeye ni mkuu wa mauti. He is above. Anaweza kaondoa mauti. He can take away death. Shetani anaua lakini hawezi kufufua. The devil kills but he cannot resurrect. Yuko Mungu ambaye shetani akiua yeye anafufua. There is God whereby if the devil kills he lifts up again. Hayo chochote ambacho adui aliua kwako. So anything that the enemy has killed in you Chini ya sauti hii unaye nisikiliza Under this voice that you Haijalishi itakuwaje lakini naona unafufuliwa It doesn't matter what it shall be but I Iwe ni uchumi wako utafufuliwa If it is your economy it will rise Iwe ni ndoa yako utafufuliwa If it is your marriage it will rise Iwe ni watoto wako waliopotezwa na adui sikiliza waradushwa watarudishwa If it is your children they will be returned Shetani alisambaratisha familia yangu The devil Dismantle my family. Na wakawa ananiambia kibinadamu tutaona injili yako kama utafika. And in human terms they told me we'll see if you will make it. Wenzako walipunguza masharti. Others could not make it. Wao wanaendelea kila saa wanasema Mungu anasema tutaona. All the time you say about God. Nikamwambia kabla mimi sijaona muongee na Mungu yeye aone kwanza. And I said before I see talk to my God. Biblia nasema The Bible says Ashindanae na Bwana atapondwa kabisa. He who contends with God will be crushed. Wakasema tutaona. And they say we'll see. Lakini habari njema ni kuambia. But I have good news to tell. Wamepigwa maadui moja baada ya mwingine. They are defeated one by one. Na nimevuka viwango ambao Mungu alitaka. And I have crossed the levels that Na baada ya kushinda after overcoming. Amenikusanyia watoto wangu. He's gathered my children. Amenipa kibali mbele za wanadamu. And gave me favor before men. Leo nimekuwa thamani Today I have value. Kwa nimesimama mbele yako. Unakwenda kuwa wa thamani na watoto wako. You are going to be of value with your children. Hata kama walifungiwa wapi. Even if they were tied somewhere. Hata nikwambia wataachiliwa kwa sababu anga limeachiliwa. I tell you they will be loose because the air space is loose. Hebu sema amina kama unanielewa. Amen if you understand. Sasa mitego yao waliowategea watu hapa. Now every trap that they set against the people. Mungu akawa ananishuhudia usiku wa jana kuachia asubuhi leo. Yesterday. 
Anaambia kuna watu wengi walitoaga kafara na sadaka mbalimbali kwa waganga wa kienyeji lengo ili wafanikiwe. He said there are many people who offered sacrifices to the witches and wizards so that they can become successful. Na kwa sasa hivi Mungu anaambia wamenijia mimi wameachaga kwenda kwa waganga. He said for now they have come to me and they have stopped to go to witches and wizards. Lakini akaniambia. But he told me. Lakini watoto wao but their children wanateseka are now in trouble. Na wao wenyewe wanapitia changamoto mbalimbali. And they themselves are going through different challenges. Zikiwepo magonjwa, including sickness, bad luck and not making to their destinies. Ndipo Bwana kanaambia nataka ukawaambie. And the Lord told me go tell them. Kwa sababu because ulikwenda kwa halali kwa mganga wa kienyeji ama agent wa adu. Legally you went to a witch or a wizard. Wengine walitoka kafara kwa ajili ili wafanikiwe. And some of you gave offering or sacrifices to succeed in life. Kumbuka shetani ni mshtaki wa ndugu. Remember the devil is the accuser of the brethren. Na najua nataka nikuambie. And I know I want to tell you. Na Mungu amenihakikishia sasa umekuja kwake maana yake umempokea kama mokozi wa And the Lord has proved to me that you have come to him because now you have accepted him as your savior. Kwa nini bado unateseka? But why are you still in trouble? Kwa sababu iliyokolewa ni roho yako. Because your spirit is born again. Lakini mazingira ya mwili but the condition of your body. Adui bado ameyashikilia kwa sababu The devil is still holding because ulikwenda kibwili kwa mganga. You went there legally to a witch doctor. Ulipeleka sadaka kwa hiari yako aliyoamuziwa kupeleka. And willingly you took your offering and send it to them. Ulivunja lini hilo agano? When did you break that covenant? Mara kuna mtu mwingine anambia hakuna laana waliokuwa ndani ya Yesu Kristo. Because somebody will say but there's no curse for those who are in Christ Jesus. Na mbona bado una mateso? But why are you still tormented? Roho yako imefunguliwa. Your, your spirit is delivered. Hata ukifa sasa unakwenda mbinguni. Even if you die now you're going to go to heaven. Lakini angalia kazi yako, angalia huduma yako, angalia But kizazi chako. Your work, your business, your angalia medicine, mwili wako. Your generation and your body. Shetani analena kuzimu. The devil is fighting in hell. Anasema watu hao walikuja kwa hiari yao. And he said these people came willingly. Hata kama sasa wameenda kwako Mungu. Even though they come to you now oh God. Hili agano hawajavunja walikuja kwa hiari yao. They not disconnect themselves over this covenant wengine because willingly they came. Wengine walipeleka gharama ya mbuzi, gharama ya ngombe, gharama ya fedha. Some of you goats or cow or money. Sikilize kwa makini. Now listen carefully. Bwana kaniambia and the Lord told me ili watoto wangu watoke huko so that my children can come out si kwa sababu hawaombi wanaomba sana it's not because they don't pray they pray very well si kwa sababu sasa hivi wana dhambi hawana dhambi kabisa it's not because they have sinned no they don't have sinned asilimia kubwa hawana dhambi a big percent of them they don't wana have sinned wangu they have my testimony lakini bado kuna vitu vinawakamata but there are things that are holding them bwana kaniambia yeye ni mwenye haki and the Lord say i am the righteous one ili akukombwe katika hali ya mwili wa kwa na uzao wako na baraka zako so your body and your generation and your blessings maana mwili unaonekana kwa damu na nyama because god can be revealed in flesh watoto wanaonekana kwa damu na nyama and even man can be seen in blood and flesh fanya kama inakuwa au haikui inaonekana kwa damu na nyama the ministry you do it can be seen visually if it's growing or not biashara unayofanya kazi unayofanya inaonekana kwa damu na nyama so it's business and the work you do kwa hiyo kama ulienda kwa mganga zamani if you went to a witch doctor in the past kubaliana, and you made an agreement or a covenant ni agano it is a covenant hata kama umeokoka even if you're born again na ukifa utaenda mbinguni and if you die you're going to go to heaven lakini utaacha mateso kwa uzao wako but you will leave torment behind Mana for your generation ambia, and the lord told kwa sababu umepigana vita kwenye anga la marekani because you have fought the battle in the air space spiritually in america na anga la marekani mungu analitawala and the spiritual space of america the lord rules Mana, anaanza kufunua vitu ambavyo watoto wake walisababishwa kukamatwa that is why he's revealing the things which are a cause why these children are captured ndipo kaniambia and he told me zile sadaka walizozipeleka kwa waganga the offerings that they sent to the witch doctors wazilete kwangu mimi Mungu they must return them back to me my your kwa, god kwa thamani ile ile with the same value ili waje nazo kwa toba na kwa maombolezo so they may come back with repentance and lamentation maneno kitu nasema you understand what i'm talking about wana anaambia ili 
gharama zile zile waliopeleka kama ni gharama ya mbuzi so gharama ya ngombe price that you took in maybe cow or goat na ilikuwa lengo lako ili ufanikiwe and your intention was to succeed lakini wakaona hailipi ukakimbilia kwa Mungu and you realize this is not working you rent to god kwenye ulimwengu wa roho shetani ni mshtari amegushtaki anasema hajatoka hapa user and he is now accusing you Unaweza ukatembea na Mungu paka ukafa ukaenda mbinguni kama Lazaro lakini ukawa maskini na matabu. You can walk with God until you die and you may go to heaven like Lazarus but still be poor. Wangapi wanaelewa kitu nasema? How many understand what I'm talking about? Utatafuta sadaka ya aina hiyo ambayo Mungu atakukumbusha kwamba walikuwa natoaga nini? The Lord will remind you what kind of offering you used to give. Na uje nazo mbele za Mungu. And bring it before the Lord kwa toba na maombolezo kumbuka Mungu anatengeneza njia ya namna yake remember god makes his own way naweza ukanisikiliza na ukatoka you can listen to me and leave lakini kama utanisikiliza mimi nimemaliza nafasi yangu but if you want to listen to me i am done with my position nakumbuka mwezi wa 3 nilifanya huduma hapa i remember in march i was ministering na baada ya kutoka hapa tulienda wisconsin and after here we went to the state of wisconsin maagizo yalikuwa napewa hapa na kuombea watu ilikuwa tofauti na wisconsin and the instructions that the lord gave me here with what he gave me in wisconsin was different na nilipofanya wisconsin ilikuwa tofauti na nilivyokwenda kufanya columbus and when i did in Wisconsin was different from what I did in Columbus. Wezi kumwika Mungu. Mungu ni wa utukufu wa ajabu. You cannot imitate God. He is the God with amazing glory. Nakumbuka alipoenda Columbus. I remember when I was in Columbus. Maana ilikuwa tu siku mbili, siku ya kwanza because it was only two days. Mungu akaniambia watangazie baada ya kila mtu aandike hitaji lake na mateso yake alafu aweke kwenye bahasha aje naye and the lord reminded me tell everybody to take a piece of paper and write their needs and their problem put it in the envelope and then bring it over na watazileta madhabahuni and they will bring it at the altar wewe ni kuhani wangu you are my priest na pia nitakutumia namna ambavyo ili watu wengi waje watoke kwenye yohani and i will use you in a way that many people will come out of their bondages aliniongoza tofauti na namna nyingine and he led me differently na walipoleta watu wa Mungu and when the people of God brought na watu walikuwa wengi sana and there were many people wakati naomba kaniambia tubu kwa ajili yao omba rehema kwa ajili yao while i was praying he said repent for them ask for mercy for them nikamwambia Mungu sasa mimi nimefanya kosa gani And I say God what have i done wrong akaniambia nakusikiliza wewe kwa sababu nimekupaka mafuta kukuwa uwawakilishe watu wao. Said, I'm listening to you because I have anointed you to represent this people. Maana maovu yao waliotendewa ama waliotenda wengine kule nisingeweza kuwasikiliza. Because the evil that was done against them or what they have participated I would have not listened. Sababu shetani ametunza kumbukumbu zao. Kwa hiyo wewe tubu. The devil keeps their record so I want you to repent. Na baadhi yao and some of them nilipomaliza ibada hiyo when i was done with that service waliona matokeo wazi mungu akiwafunga they saw the results openly what god did for them nilikuwa napewa ushuhuda na na, na pastor wangu mkalimani hapa i was i was given a, a testimony uh, with uh, my pastor here who kuna, translates kuna mshirika wake ama mtu mmoja ambaye amemlea kwa muda mrefu one of our members ambaye amekuwa na tatizo la uzao who could not bear children ni sawa yes she was barren na wameteseka na mume wake muda mrefu and they have gone up and down for many years nilipokuwa kule Wisconsin mahali huduma yake ilipo while i was in the state of Wisconsin tuliomba we prayed kama Mungu alivyonisaidia as god helped me to pray lakini hakupokea but she didn't receive it nilipoenda Columbus when we went to Columbus tumishi baba yake wa kiroho ananiambia na yeye akaja and she also came in the husband na alipofika yeye ndiye alimtia moyo and when she gets there i told uh, this couple wacha aseme alichomwambia well niliwaambia wale wale wa 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 bibi na bwana kwamba leo mtapokea muujiza wenu na ndivyo alivyokuwa na leo wamepakata mtoto and today they are carrying a child lakini mungu aliniongoza kwa namna nyingine but god led me in a different way kwa ukinisikiliza so if you listen to me kile mungu anachosema leo what god is saying today itakuwa kutoka kwako it is going to be for you 
Haijalishi umeomba kiasi gani. It doesn't matter how long you have prayed. Ni jambo zuri ndio maana uko mpaka sasa. It's a good thing that's why you're still alive. Na Mungu ametengeneza njia. And God has made a way for you. Leo uko mbele yangu. Today you are in front of me. Utakaponisikiliza. When you listen. Nakwambia hata kama walikuzuilia guzimu utatoka tu. I tell you even if hell was holding you you will come out. Ndipo Bwana kaniambia watakapokuja na hiyo sadaka. And the Lord told me when they come with that offering. Ambao wanakumbukumbu kwamba zamani walikuwa wanapeleka kwa waganga. Which they remember that in the past they used to send to the witches and Maana kwa sababu hiyo walikamatwa kwa njia hiyo. This is the reason why they were captured. Kumbuka nirudi hawajakamata roho yako wamekamata maisha yako remember, mwili wako. They cannot and they cannot hold your spirit but they are capturing your body. Ndio maana unaona unaweza kaona wakristo wengi sana wanaompenda Mungu na kumtumikia. Unaona wamejaa magonjwa, mateso na wanakufa kabla wakati na tunajua wanaenda mbinguni lakini wanaacha vizazi vyao. That's why you can see many Christians who really truly love Jesus and they serve him and live for him but they are facing a lot of difficult things, diseases, sicknesses and different attacks. And even they die they go to heaven but they leave a very difficult legacy behind. And yes when they die they go to heaven. But they die prematurely. They don't get to their destiny. But God reveal things so you can get to your finish line. Ndipo Bwana kaniambia utawafungua uta na kuwatenga na hiyo laana na magonjwa na mambo magumu baada ya kuleta hiyo sadaka sio tu kuikimbiza hapa tutakuja kuomboleza na kutubu na kumwambia Mungu niliendaka kwa waganga nilipelekaga gharama hizi na baba kwa neema uliyonipa nimeleta hii sadaka kwako hii Bwana ilikomboe na kutoka hapo utakapoomboleza na nitakapoomba na kukufungua nataka nikwambie utamuona Mungu wazi wazi na kila kitu kitakaa sawa. Oh, sukari itakimbia, kansa itaondoka, lana zitaondoka, utapewa miaka mikamilifu ya kuishi chini ya jua. It's not just about you bringing the offering, but I tell you, when you bring that offering in obedience, we will cry and lament before God in repentance. And I tell you the power of God will flow through you. Every sickness or any weakness will depart from your body. Hebu sema amina. Say amen. Wangapi wanaelewa? How many understands? Ngoja nisome neno unaweza kusema unatoa wapi hii kitu? Let me read the word you might say well you're just manufacturing your thing. Kitabu cha waamuzi sura ya 6. In the book of Judges chapter number 6. Tukianza na ule mstari wa pili unaona Israeli jinsi walivyofungwa. Starting wali from verse number 2 you will see how Israel was tied. Biblia sema mkono wa Midian ulikuwa na nguvu juu ya Israeli. Leo ungesema mkono wa adui una nguvu juu ya kanisa. Tena kwa sababu ya Midian wana wa Israeli walijifanyia hayo mashimo yaliyo milimani na hayo mapango na hizo ngome. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. Today you would have said the hand of Midian was against the church. And because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. Basi kawa hapo Israeli walipokuwa wamepanda mashamba wa Midian wakakwea na wa Amaleki na hao wana wa Mashariki wakakwea juu yao. And so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of east even they came up against them. Msari wa nne wakapanda marago juu yao na kuiharibu hayo maongeo ya nchi hata wakafika Gaza wala hawakuacha katika Israeli riziki ziwazo zote kondo wala ngombe wala punda. And they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou come unto Gaza and left no substance for Israel neither sheep nor ox nor ass Biblia nasema hawakuacha riziki ziwazo sote ina maana Israeli wakawa maskini The Bible says they left no substance it means Israel became impoverished Leo wewe unakaa Marekani asilimia kubwa watu wanateseka na wakati America ni tajiri na America inasaidia nchi nyingi duniani na tunakuta wewe uko ndani yake ni maskini tatizo liko wapi You live in America and this is a great nation a wealthy nation that helps many other nations but you are poor Where is the problem? Unaweza ukawa pia una baraka zako, lakini kwa nini mateso ya magonjwa na ma, na, na, na mikosi na kuandama? And, and you may have your own blessings, but still the misfortune and curses of sicknesses and diseases they never depart from you. Tunaelewana? 
Do we understand? Maana yake ufalme wa adu ukipata nafasi kwako haijalishi uko mahali gani utateseka. It means the kingdom of darkness when it gets a door against you it doesn't matter where you are you will be in trouble. Twende kwa point. Now let's go by another point. Israel walifanya nini na leo Mungu anakutaka wewe ufanye nini kanisa? What did Israel do and what does God want you to do today as a church? Ule msari wa 6 tusome. Let's go to verse 6. Israel wakatwezwa sana kwa sababu ya wamidiani. Nao wana wa Israeli wakamlilia Bwana. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Ndio maana unapoomboleza kwa toba angalia Mungu alileta majibu au hakuleta majibu. Msari wa saba. Ikisha ikawa hapo wana wa Israeli walipomlilia Bwana kwa sababu ya Midiani. Msari wa nane. Bwana akatuma nabii aende kwa hao wana wa Israeli. Naye akawaambia, Bwana yeye Mungu wa Israeli asema hivi, mimi niliwaleta ninyi mkwe kutoka Misri, nikawatoa katika nyumba ya utumwa, msari wa tisa. Nami niliwaokoa na mikono ya Misri na mikono ya watu waliokuwa wakiwaonea. Nami niliwafukuza watoke mbele zenu, nami niliwapa ninyi nchi yao, msari wa kumi. Kisha niliwaambia mimi ndimi Bwana Mungu wenu msiiche miungu ya waamori ambao mwaketi katika nchi yao lakini hamkuitii sauti yangu ndio maana walikamatwa Verse 10 And I said unto you I am the Lord your God fear not the gods of Amorites in whose land ye dwell but ye have not obeyed my voice This is why they were captured Hallelujah Hallelujah Na kwa sababu walitubu Mungu akatoa kusema ni kwa sababu gani wanapita hapo and because they repented the lord now revealed what was the reason they were going through where they were going through ndipo unakumbuka Mungu akaja kamtokea mtu anaitwa Gideon and remember god appeared to a man called Gideon sina sawa eh is that correct akamtokea mtu anaitwa nani? He appeared to a man called Mungu akaanza kuleta ukombozi kupitia Gideon. And he began to deliver the children of Israel via a man called Gideon. Lakini ilikuwa lazima Gideon ashughulike na ile roho ambayo iliwazuia wana wa Israeli ili na yeye asije akazuiliwa kama kiongozi wa wana wa Israeli. Leo tungesema kama kiongozi wa kanisa ama we kama kiongozi wa familia. But it was necessary for Gideon to deal with the spirit that was preventing the israelites first let it also prevent him as the leader of the israelites kuna mtu ananifuatilia vizuri is anybody following me up naomba unifuatilie msari wa 25 verse 25 angalia look maana sasa hiyo gideon anaanza kuwapiga maadui now gideon is fighting the enemy amepewa kibale maana mungu alimwambia eh mtu upendwae eh mungu anamwambia kama mimi napendwa mbona tunapata shida namna hii mungu anamwambia nenda na uwezo wako huu maana nitakuwa pamoja na wewe because gideon was told you are highly favored and he said if i am favored why are we in trouble and god said go by the might that i have given you for i will be with you anaposema nitakuwa pamoja na wewe kwani mwanzo alikuwa ameacha alikuwa amemwacha wapi alikuwa wapi mungu now watch this god says i will be with you what happened in the past did he left him mungu aliwaacha kwa sababu walikamatwa na roho ya wamidiani the lord had left them because the spirit of the midianite Wami- caught up with them wa midiani ndio wakawa na mamlaka kwenye ulimwengu wa roho juu ya maisha yao so, karibu uchumi wao na so the midianites had power over them in the realm of the spirit and they destroyed their lives sasa ili mungu arudi atembee pamoja na gideon na wana wa angalia kitu mungu alipomwambia so when if so so that god will return and walk again with Gideon and the Israelites this is what he told him Msari wa 25 verse 25 Ikawa usiku huo huo Bwana akamwambia mtoe ngombe wa baba yako yani ngombe wa pili wa miaka saba. ukaangusha madhabahu ya Baali alionayo baba yako ukaikate ashara ile ulionayo karibu nayo And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him Take thy father's young bullock even the second bullock of seven years old and throw down the altar of Baal that thy father hath and cut down the groove that is by it how many understand what i'm talking about so if he used to send cows all the worth of 
many big numbers of dollars to the witch doctors in the past ilikuwa ni agano maana walikuwa wanataka kufanikiwa kimaisha na ulikuwa useni ukafanikiwe kiroho so it was a covenant because they wanted to succeed in the natural life but not the spiritual one unanielewa tunasema you understand what i'm talking about hapa gideon now gideon ameinuliwa na mungu ameisikia sauti ya mungu he is lifted by god and he is listened to the voice of god lakini mungu anamwambia but god is telling him chukua ngombe wa baba yako take one bullock of your father or cow yani ngombe wa pili wa miaka saba ukaangushe madhabahu ya bali aliyokuwa nayo baba yako baba yake gideon ni muyahudi inakuaje ana mungu bali ndani yake now the instruction was to take the second cow of seven years old and then go and sacrifice to bring down the altar of your father but watch this the father of gideon is a jew how come that his god became bad na uzuri wa baba yake gideon alikuwa bado yuko hai and the good thing is gideon's father was still alive ile roho iliyowakosesha wakasujudia miungu mingine ndio iliyowakamata ilipowakamata si tu watoto pia iliwakamata wazazi kakamata na watoto wao the same spirit that caused the father to sin is the same spirit that also captured the children i don't know if somebody understands angalia mungu angeweza kusema hivi nimeiondoa ile roho kuanzia sasa mimi ni mungu naye tawala ah mungu ni wa utaratibu mambo yote yafanyike kwa uzuri na kwa utaratibu god could have said now look i've removed that spirit now you are free i am the god but look God is the God of order therefore he follows his protocol. Anamwambia chukua ngombe wa baba yako. He said take the cow of your father. Ili ukavunje ama ukaangushe madhabahu ya Baal so that you can destroy Baal's altar. Alionayo baba yako. Which your father is holding. Ukaitakase. Go and clean it up. Angalia msari wa 26. Now look at verse 20. Baada kuangusha ile madhabahu kwa kupitia ile sadaka. After destroying the altar by the offering. Msari wa 26 unasema. The 26 says. Ndipo kamjengee Bwana Mungu wako madhabahu juu ya ngome hii. And build an altar My unto God. the Lord thy God upon the top of this rock. Kuna mtu ananielewa hapa? Is somebody understanding me? Sikiliza. Listen. Ulimwangu wa roho ni wa ajabu sana. The spiritual realm is strange. Gideon anaambia Bwana mimi siwezi pamoja nitakuwa na wewe lakini kuna miungu inazuia kwenye ulimwengu wa roho. Sasa na walio sababisha ni baba yako na wana wa Sasa ile roho iliondoke nataka ujenge madhabahu nyingine kwa ngombe kwa ngombe maana baba yake huenda alitoaga ngombe na akakanyanganywa uchumi wake sasa leta hiyo ngombe uliyopeleka kwa waganga njo toba njo omboleza hapa mimi kama kwani nitakuepo hapa na Yesu ataanza kujenga madhabahu kwa hiyo sadaka utakayoleta na kutoka hapo nataka nikwambie hata kama una athima hata kama kwenu wanakufa kabla ya wakati na kwambie hata kwenu hata kama wamekataliwa ndio itakuwa mwanzo mpya wa maisha yako kwenda juu The instructions that God gave Gideon was to take back that cow from the father because most likely the father used to give offering on the same cow to Baal but now build a new altar and give an offering and come and lament and ask for mercy and I will overturn even if there are sicknesses and diseases or your economy is in trouble it shall come back to life How many understood that Because of my time Gideon alikubali. Gideon accepted the call. Akaenda kutoa ngombe. And he went and gave the sacrifice of a cow. Kwa baba yake. Of his father. Akogopa kufanya hayo mchana akafanya usiku. And he was afraid to do it during the daytime so he did it at night. Akaenda kaangusha ile madhaba. And he went and destroyed the grooves of that altar. Naangushaje madhaba? How do you bring down the altar? Ile sadaka aliyokuwa anapeleka kwa waganga ili ufanikiwe. The same sacrifice or offering you used to take to witches and wizards so you become successful. Zile kafara aliyokuwa anapeleka ili watu wengine waharibiwe ili wewe uinuliwe. All the sacrifices you used to send so others can be destroyed so you become lifted. Na ukaona hailipi. And you saw this is not working. Wakaja kwa Mungu. 
They came to the living God. Mungu anakutaka. God wants you. Chukua thamani ile ile. He wants you to take the same value. Utakuja kwake maana anakusikia. And come to him because he hears you. Kija hapo utakuja kwa toba. And when you come here you come in repentance. Na maombolezo makubwa. And heavy lamentation. Ndipo kwenye ulimwengu wa roho. And then in the spiritual realm. Tavunjwa ile agano. That covenant will be broken. Madhabahu ile leo jenga yenye halazema kizazi chenu wanakufaka na pressure. Kizazi chenu wanakufa na kifaa. Wazazi itavunjwa. Itaanza kujengwa madhabahu mapya na wewe utakwenda kusikia That altar that demands upon your sacrifice to die with any kind of sickness or diseases it will be broken and life will come back and you will succeed Kama umenielewa sema amen If you understood say amen Nyumbani kwetu tulikuwa maskini In my family we were very poor Nilibeba maiti ya baba yangu kilomita 65 I carry the dead body of my father for 65 kilometers Mana wakati napata ufahamu na kwenda kidato cha kwanza ndio kwanza nataka kwenda shule ndio maskini ukaanza Because when I was just about to go to my secondary school then poverty hit my family Wazazi wangu walikufa mebaki mama yangu mzazi Because my dad died only my mother was left Mungu aliponitokea kwa moto. When God appeared to me by fire. Nikaokoka. And I got born again. Na Mungu akaanza kuniandaa. And God began to prepare me. Haikuwa rahisi kama unavyofikiri. It was not easy as you think. Lakini asante Mungu asiacha mwanadamu. But thanks be to God who does not walk away from man. Mara nyingi Mungu alikuwa anambia funga siku 21, funga Many siku 15. God would tell me fast 21 days, 15 days. Ananipeleka mazingira ambayo wewe huwezi kuamini. And he will take me through environment that you will not believe. Na wengine wakanikatia tamaa na sema huyu atakufa tu. And some people gave up on me. They said this guy is going to die. Mungu aliniambia niko pamoja na wewe. But God said I am with you. Na kuinua ili ubebe sauti yangu. And I'm lifting you up so you can carry my voice. Hautafanya huduma kwa mazoea. You are not going to do ministry as others do. Hata kama nikikutuma kwa mtu mmoja. Even if I send you to a one person. Lazima unisikilize. You must hear from me. Kwa lazima nikutishe paka ifikie hapo nitaondoa ubinadamu wako. So in order to bring you to that place I have to take your humanity. Nitaondoa asili yako I will take your nature Taondoa tamaa I will take any kind of cravings Ziwa za mali whether it is possessions Ziwa za wanawake or women na chochote kile and anything else Ilikuwa gharama It was a price to pay Lakini ifupishe kwa kusema But let me bring this to a short Tulikuwa maskini sana We were very poor Ndugu zangu wengine wa wadogo walikuwa nafata walikuwa nakufa mfululizo nyoka anajifunua wanauawa and some of my other relatives they would die prematurely a snake would just show up and they would die kwa mimi najua maana hiyo maskini so i know the meaning of poverty mimi naelewa maana mtu akifa i understand when somebody dies nikikuta mtu amefiwa analia naelewa maana yake when i find somebody is uh, is crying because they've lost a lost a loved one I know what it means. Nikikuta mtu amelala nja Afrika, ninaelewa maana ya njaa ni nini. In Africa when I find people are sleeping hungry, I know what it means. Bwana kanifundisha. And the Lord taught me. Lakini sema kwamba But let me say this. Wakati nilipo faulu, when I passed the test. Kaanza kuniambia sasa nakupaka mafuta kwa ajili ya kuniwakilisha. And he said now I'm going to anoint you so you can be my representative. Nilidai nikamwambia nataka watu ambao hawanifahamu kabisa waje waanze kudhibitisha ili nijue hayo unayosema ni wewe Mungu maana inawezekana unasema na mimi lakini huku kwingine watu wasijue. And I said Lord I want the people who do not know me at all so that when you begin to manifest they and me myself will know that this is you Mungu akathibitisha kwa watumishi wengi And the Lord began to prove his word through Nikaanza kumtumikia Mungu I began to serve him Nikiwa maskini I was poor Jana nilitoa mfano nikawa na kanisa maskini Yesterday I gave you an example I had a church that was poor La watu kama 12 13 lakini maskini 12 or 13 people but very poor Tukitoka kanisani wakitoa sadaka wanatoa shilingi labda imezidi sana 500 700 you know, ya come, Tanzania shillings when we come for a church service you know the offering will be very little money maybe 500 Tanzanian shillings na nyumba niliyokodisha na daiwa kodi zaidi ya miezi minne kanisa liweza hata kulipa wao wenyewe wana shida and the house i rented i am supposed to pay the landlord 
I was behind four months, but even the church that I was using, I Mungu, still had to pay. Mungu anapokuita hakimbili kwa sababu umekuwa mtumishi na utapata watu ndio faidike hao watu. Hiyo hiyo ni akili ya kidunia. Mungu anamwandaa mtu kwanza bila kujali shida yako unapita wapi. Ndipo ukifaulu hilo ndipo Mungu anasema utajiri na heshima vinatoka kwangu. Anafanya njia. When God calls you the way he prepares you is not the way the human mind does by looking at the number of people you have and think that they are the ones who going to supply your needs no he does it in a different way after you pass the test then he will promote you na alipoanza kunibariki when he started to bless me naombea watu wanafunguliwa wanakuja na sadaka zao and i will pray for people they deliver they bring their offerings ananiambia ni lazima unisikilize but he will still tell me you must listen to me wengine wanaongozwa kufanya kitu fulani kulipia watoto wa watu shule kulipia others, nyumba za watu others are led to do other things to pay for children's school fees or pay for people's rents kija nyumbani kwangu nakula na daga na mchicha na wakati hela nilipata lakini Mungu aniruhusu kuzitumia but when you come to my house i just eat uh, little little fishes dagas and uh, some spinach i have money but the lord has not permitted me to use it nikimuuliza ananyamaza kimya when i ask him he's quiet on me Lakini Mungu ni mwema. But God is good. Alipoanza kunizidisha na anaamuru watu walete fedha. When he began to increase me and mtu allow anaku, people to bring money. Mtu anakuja hata simfahamu wala sio wa dini yangu, wengine ni maaskofu, wengine ni wachungaji. Anasema nilipokuwa naomba mlimani, Mungu ameniniambia nileta sadaka. He said when I was praying in the mountain, the Lord told me to come and bring this offering. Na wewe baba yangu wa kiroho. And you be my spiritual father. Hata kama sio wa dini yako lakini ameniniambia huo unanisaidia mambo fulani ya kiroho. Even if you don't belong to my religion, but God has directed me that you will help me in some of spiritual things. Nikipata hizo hela kama nyingi Mungu anambia nenda kajenge nyumba ya mtu fulani. And when I get the money, the Lord will tell me take part of this money, build somebody's house. Nikafanya kwa uaminifu sana. And I did it faithfully. Mwisho Mungu alipoanza kuniruhusu kupata mashamba. And in the end when the Lord allowed me to get now big pieces of land like farms. Na nikaanza kujenga nyumba zingine za biashara. And I started building other houses for business. Ndipo Mungu akaniambia. That's when the Lord told me. Utatoa sadaka ya shamba. You will give an offering for the farm. Sababu ile mashamba yamekaliwagwa na watu wengi, mauti tanena watapitia kwenye mashamba. Because those farms have been or they've been owned by many other people, death can come through that area. Hoja unaga unajenga nyumba inafika mahali ndio kama kule ulikuwa unaendelea vizuri ukafika kwenye ile eneo ndio kwanza unaharibikiwa na mtaji unaisha na kila kitu. Haven't you seen that you're building a house somewhere and you get to a certain level everything dies. Bwana asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Bwana kanaambia utatoa na nikamwambia nitape akaniongosha mtumishi mwingine ambayo wala si wa dhahabu langu wala alikuwa simfahamu vizuri lakini nikaenda kumwendea na mke wangu tukamwambia Mungu anasema tukupe kipande cha ardhi. And the Lord showed me another man of God that he is not from my religion and I don't know him very well but me and my wife went to him and say hey The Lord God is telling us to give you the piece of land. Anapaki kushanga. And he was surprised. Tunakwenda tunampa ile shamba. And we go and give him the, the land. Tunaenda kwa wanasheria ama kwa wakili tunaandikisha tupa. And we go to the law system and then we make every legal document. Toka hapo. And from that Hakuna moment, mtu atagusa rasilimu zako. Nobody is going to touch your resources. Kuna mtu atagusa mali zako. Nobody will touch your possessions. Hebu sema amina kama unanielewa. Say amen if you understand. Kati mwingine anatoka kwenye mikutano. Sometimes I come out of meetings. Nafika nyumbani sadaka zilizokusanywa kwenye mikutano. And when I get home all the offerings they gathered in the meetings. Naziombea kwanza. And I pray for that first. Mungu ananiambia beba peleka kwa watoto yatima kituo changu fulani. And the Lord will say take this take to the orphans at a certain area. Nimefanya zaidi ya miaka mitano na wala sijawahi kuacha. I've done that more than five years and I have not stopped. Kila miezi mitatu lazima nipeleke thamani kubwa zaidi ya milioni tatu za kitanzania kupeleka chakula huko na Every... mingine milioni tatu napeleka kwenye kituo kingine nafanya kwa moyo kuliko unavyofikiri. Every 3 months I will have to distribute more than 3 million Tanzanian shillings to different areas of the orphanages. Ndipo Mungu atnapokwenda kukuthibitisha. Then God now begins to prove you. Ndipo Mungu anaweza kumkemea Allah anapokaribia kwako. God can rebuke the devourer who comes against you. Na kwa sababu hiyo. And for that reason. 
kwa kuwa umenielewa because you have understood usiende kubeba sadaka mradi unabeba Don't go and just take offering because it is an offering. Jioni ya leo nenda kapige magoti. Tonight go back and kneel down. Muulize Mungu. And ask the Lord. Umesema na mtumishi wako Bwana. You mwana. spoken to your servant O Lord. Mimi nifanye nini? What must I do? Atakwambia. He is going to tell you. Kwa sababu hili ni neno lake. Because this is his word. Hili neno sio la sumbe. This is not sumbe's word. Ni neno lake kwa ajili yako. This is his word for you. Na ndio maana amenileta Marekani kwa ajili yako. He's brought me to America for you. Asante kwa kunisikiliza Mungu akubariki. Thank you for listening to me. May the Lord bless you. Na kesho and tomorrow mapema kama bishop alivyotangaza early as bishop has told us tutakuwa na hizo ibada tutakapofika hapa tutakuwa na muda mrefu labda sana sana tutasikia ushuhuda na baada ya ushuhuda wale wale kuja na hizo sadaka tutaanza maombolezo we'll have a, a good tutalia time. mbele za Mungu ili Mungu ashuke aje afanye kile ambacho kuharibu yale maagano nataka niwaambie wewe mwenye kisukari mwenye pressure mwenye sijui nini mwenye upofu wewe enda kumsikilize Mungu alafu kesho umuone Mungu anavyofanya kazi katikati ya wanadamu whatever it is you're facing whether sugar diabetes or blood pressure high low whatever it is i urge you go back to your room or go back home listen to the voice of God concerning that particular offering and when we come here tomorrow we are going to lament we are going to cry and we will ask god for mercy then you will see his glory manifest hakuna mungu ka ma wewe hakuna ka ma wewe hakuna mungu ka ma wewe ha Hakuna Mungu kama wewe Hakuna Mungu kama wewe Hakuna Haleluya kama wewe Hakuna Hakuna
mshukuru Mungu kwa kinywa chako kwa maneno machache. I ask you to thank God using your own mouth use a few words. Nakumwambia Bwana najiweka wakfu nikasikie vema kutoka kwako. And tell God I dedicate myself so I can hear well from you. Kwa ajili ya kukuandalia ibada ya kesho ambayo Mungu nataka ujojidhihirishe. So as to prepare for tomorrow's service that you want to manifest. Shukuru Mungu kwa maneno machache. Thank God with a few words. Mama tunakuadhimisha wewe. Father we honor you. Unastahili sifa na utukufu wako. We deserve the glory and the praise. Asante kwa neno lako ambalo limetujilia. Thank you for your word that has come our way. Neema yako ifunike kanisa na watu wako. May the grace cover the church. Na ukaseme nao kwa lugha ya kibinadamu. Speak to them with a different grace. Ukawakumbusha yapasayo e Bwana. And remind them what they need to do. Na kesho utukufu wako kaonekane. So that tomorrow your glory will be revealed. Asante mwaminifu. Thank you faithful Asante baba. Thank you Lord. Asante. Thank you Lord. Mama wewe Yesu sioni Sande sana, sande sana mtumishi wa Mungu Bishop. Mungu akubariki sana kwa ujumbe mzuri sana wa kwenda kubarikiwa. Kwa hivyo ni washukuru sana tumefika mwisho wa ibada yetu jioni ya leo. Na tutaanza ibada yetu kesho saa tatu mpaka saa nane. Tutakuwa na ushuhuda na hiyo sadaka mmeambiwa ili mchiungamanishe na kubarikiwa kwenyu. Kwa hivyo kuna baasha ziko hapa sitawekwa hapa mkiondoka umekisha umetoka na basha yako andika mahitaji yako kwa basha yako andika kila kitu unahitaji na Mungu anaenda kukuonekania kwa baasha kuna zel number kuna cash up number ukihitaji kila information iko hapo alafu niendelea kuwashukuru sana uh, kwa hoteli wameandaa chakula kama unahitaji kula hapa ni dola 14 unaingia hapo kwa una, unachukua chakula yako unakula unafurahia uh, basi nichukue nafasi kuwatakia kila heri Mungu awabariki awalinde na watunze na wafunike kwa damu ya Yesu Kristu mnapoenda mnaporudi mpaka tukutane kesho siku nyingine mbarikiwe sana mfunike kwa damu ya Yesu Kristu twende na amani ya Bwana amen Mungu kama wewe hakuna Mungu